الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد In our previous class we were discussing the issues regarding the importance of learning and studying the affairs of the heart and we have seen that the heart is the place where the faith resides and where it begins and proceeds from and the foundation of Iman is established in the heart of a believer and it's a light for him. And whenever that light and that foundation is cultivated and it's kept good and strong, then it will produce great benefits for that person and likewise for their family and the community and for the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, the foundation of faith is like a seed that is planted in the heart and the hearts of the believers and the revelation and the beneficial knowledge and the guidance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is like the water that's coming to that seed and is causing it to grow and to flourish and to be good. And so the heart is like the soil and the land. And if the soil of the land is good and is healthy and is taken care of and is cultivated properly then the seeds that are inside of the land they're going to grow to be great trees and flowers and fruits and so much great benefits that come from the land that is toiled properly and that is kept up and cared for like that the heart of a believer if it is kept clean if it's kept good if it's taken care of then the seed of faith will grow into a great tree a great tree having great benefits, so many branches and so many fruits, so many uh, good things will come from the good manners and from the good speech and from the strong reliance and trust in Allah Azza wa Jal and actions of obedience and turning away from evil. This is all with regards to the affair of the heart. But if somebody has some land that is, that is corrupted, and it's not taken care of, and there's all different type of pollutions in the land, and then somebody tries to plant some seeds there, then maybe the seeds are not going to grow. Maybe they're going to die right away, or maybe they're going to grow only a little bit and then fall over, or maybe they're going to grow, and then the fruits are going to be so bitter because the land that the seed was planted in was corrupted and polluted with all types of bad things. So likewise, the heart, the heart of a person as well, if it's corrupted, then it's going to have bitter fruits, meaning it's going to bring about the bad actions. And we have seen some of the evidences with regards to this, some of the evidences with regards to this in the previous class. In the previous class, alhamdulillah. So today we discuss the issue of the pillars of worship related to the heart. The issues of the pillars of worship that are related to the heart. Arkan at-ta'abudi al-qalbiya. Arkan at-ta'abudi al-qalbiya. The pillars of the worship of the heart. So, just as the actions of worship, they have pillars and they have conditions and they have requirements that a person he has to perform in order for them to be correct. Likewise, the heart has actions. It must perform that must be coupled with every action of worship that's done outwardly. Every action of worship that's done outwardly with the tongue from the recitation of the Qur'an or from making the adhkar or from teaching or advising the people or from giving the khutbah or calling others or from memorizing hadith and reading and seeking knowledge or being kind and nice to the people, hoping for the reward from Allah, and saying sweet and nice words to your mother or your father, hoping for the reward from Allah. All of these statements, they must be done with the movement of the heart as well, while the tongue is moving. And also those afkar, the afkar that are done before the bed, before sleeping, and when you wake, and after the obligatory prayers, all of these statements that are statements of worship, they must be done while the heart is moving likewise. And also whenever a person is performing the salat or he is giving charity or doing any of the actions 
of worship by seeking knowledge and taking notes or like uh, writing down narrations and uh, memorizing the Quran. All of these affairs that are considered actions that a person he performs, they also must be performed along with the movement of the heart as well. So if somebody, for example, he made salat, but he didn't make sujood, and he's able to, and he's able to, would his salat be accepted? Somebody who is making obligatory salat and he didn't make ruku' and he's able to, would his salat be accepted? Why not? Do you know why? Because the ruku' and the sujood is a pillar of the salat. And if you don't bring the pillars, then there is no salat. But likewise, every action of worship, it has pillars in the heart that must be performed along with that. This is very, very important. And this is what makes the worship beneficial. And this is what makes the life of a Muslim sweet, pleasant, and happy. Whenever a person, he worships Allah with his body parts, while his heart is remembering Allah Azza wa Jal, and hoping for his reward, and fearing his punishment, and loving him for his great favors and blessings. And loving him for his great favors and blessings, and hoping for his reward, and fearing his punishment. Many different types of worship that the heart does. Many different actions that the heart performs, which are considered actions of worship. But the foundation of them, and the pillars of that worship, that is performed by the heart are three. And that is Al-Mahabbatu, Wal-Raja'u, Wal-Khawf. Al-Mahabbatu, Al-Mahabbatu, and this is the Asl. Al-Mahabba, to love, to love, to love, to love Allah, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Wal-Raja'a, Al-Raja'a, yani Al-Raghba, to have hope and desire for that which is with Allah Azza wa Jal, to hope in Him, and to hope in His mercy, and to hope that He will accept, and to hope that He will help you, and to hope that He will uh, aid you, and to hope that He will be nice to you, and hope that He will guide you, and hope that He will admit you into His paradise. وَالْخَوْفُ وَالْخَشَّةُ To fear Allah Azza wa Jal, to fear His punishment, and to fear that He will not accept the actions, and to fear that He will be angry with you and the likes like this. All of these affairs here, they are the pillars of worship. And uh, Ibn al-Qayyim, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullahu ta'ala, he has mentioned a beautiful example of this affair. And it's, he's mentioned that this is like a bird. Like a bird. And this is the way of a believer in this life, flying through life, like flying through the air, like a bird. Like the way the bird flies through the air. And the body of the bird or the head of the bird, the head of the bird, this is Al-Mahabba. It's the love. And on the right wing you have, the right wing is the hope. And the left wing is the, is the fear. And so long as the wings are balanced, then the bird is moving forward. He's flying steadily and stable. But if the, one of the wings is cut off, then the bird is going to stop flying and tumble and fall down and die or if one of the wings is stronger than the other one he's going to fly crooked he's not going to go straight so the wings they have to be balanced and the, the love is in the middle so the love is the foundation loving Allah Azza wa Jal. why are we praying because we love Allah why are we fasting because we love Allah why we do we lower our gaze because we love Allah why do we take notes and study because we love Allah why does a Muslim do all of the obligatory actions and avoid all of the prohibitions because he loves Allah? Because he loves Allah. And whenever someone loves something, then they hope to be near and close and to have the love of the one that they love. So likewise, a believer, he does those deeds seeking nearness to Allah, hoping that Allah will love him and hoping that Allah will help him and hoping that Allah will guide him. And also, whenever someone loves something, they're afraid that the one that they love will not love them. And they're afraid that the one that they love will not be happy with them. Or they're afraid that they may lose the one that they love and be far away from them. So likewise, a believer, he worships Allah in this manner, afraid that Allah will not accept from him, afraid that Allah 
will not help him, afraid that Allah will be angry with him. So this is the manner that all of the actions of worship, they must be performed. Whenever you stand in prayer, you have to remember Allah. And whenever you remember Allah, what do you remember? Whenever you think about Allah, what do you think about? Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawm. Lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Man dha alladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi-idhni. Ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. Wa la yuhituna bi shay'in min ilmihi illa bima sha'a. Wasi'a kursiyuhu samawati wal ard. Wa la ya'uduhu hifluhuma. Wa huwa al-haliyu al-azim. These are from the things that you remember. You remember Ayat al-Kursi. And you remember the benefits that you learned from there. And you remember about the greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal. And you remember about His perfect life and perfect attributes. And also that He is alive and never dies. And that your life is in His hand and under His command. And that you cannot do anything except for with His will. And that if He does not help you, then no one can help you. And He is the one who has authority and command. And likewise, He is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. And He is Maliki Yawm din He is the most gracious and the most merciful. And He's the master of the day of judgment you remember Allah you remember his beautiful names and attributes and you remember likewise all of his blessings and favors and all of the good that you have you think about your eyesight oh man I can see so good alhamdulillah this is a favor from Allah and you remember your hearing alhamdulillah I can hear so well and this is a favor from Allah. And you remember all of the good that you have and the safety in your family and your mom and your dad and your brother and your sister and your friends. And you remember the masjid and all the fun you have and establishing the good and seeking the, the reward from Allah and studying and learning and playing outside and everything is good. Alhamdulillah. And smiling and laughing and going to bed at night safe and waking up healthy. Allahu Akbar. All of these great blessings. And then you love Allah. And then you worship him and you hope that he'll give you more blessings. And you hope that he will continue to protect you. And you're afraid that he will not help you. Or that he will send a punishment because of your weakness and because of your deficiency. Because you're not very thankful sometimes. So this is how a believer, he will worship Allah in this manner. He remembers Allah and he loves him. And he hopes for the good from Allah Azza wa Jal. And he fears that Allah will not accept his deeds not accept his deeds this is the foundation of this affair this is the foundation of the pillars of the worship of the heart and they are found in surah al-fatiha and in other places in the quran likewise but in surah al-fatiha allah he says alhamdulillah rabbil alameen and you praise and thank allah the lord of the worlds why do you praise and thank allah praise and thank him because he has the attributes of perfection and likewise, we praise and thank Him because He is the one who is providing for all of the favors and blessings. So therefore, the one who provides for all of the favors and blessings, then we, he, He's the one who you love. You love Allah Azza wa Jal for providing for you from the favors and blessings. So you say, Alhamdulillah. So Alhamd, praising. The praising here, that is an action of worship that belongs, and that is rightfully belonging to Allah alone. This is to praise Him with love. To praise Him with love and to magnify Him and to glorify Him and to thank Him with love. Alhamdulillah. That means that you love Allah and you're thanking Him because He is the one who is giving us all of the good that we have. And then after that Allah he says, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Allah is the most gracious and the most merciful. So if you hear that Allah is the most gracious and the most merciful, what does your heart start to do? Starts to hope for the mercy of Allah and His grace. Maliki Yawm deen the master of the day of judgment. Oh, meaning you're going to stand before Allah and He's going to take you into account for everything you looked at. And for everything you listened to. And for everything you said. He's going to, and all of these, everything. He's going to take you into account for everything you did. And everything you text with your thumbs. And every website you looked at. And every short that you are staring at and watching in every video. All of these affairs are going to be taken to account for them. All of those blessings that you have been given and bestowed, then how did you use them? Allah is going to take you into account for that on the day of resurrection. So now what do you do? What does your heart start doing now? Oh, you start becoming afraid and scared. I'm scared that maybe Allah, He will not forgive you. Maybe Allah, He will punish you because you know that you have done some things that are wrong and this is the way of the human being. So the one who worships Allah with love and with fear and with, with hope and with fear, then many times Allah will guide that person's heart and bless him and guide him to seek repentance and to keep him 
on a good path and make him from those who are the good people whom he loves subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala so we have these pillars of faith love and hope and fear love and hope and fear and also from the actions of the heart is al-ikhlas sincerity and purity of intention and whenever a person fulfills properly these pillars in his worship these pillars here in the heart whenever he's making any action of worship no matter what it is whenever his heart is doing these pillars properly then the fruit of that is sincerity he will be sincere the one who loves Allah and while he's worshiping Allah, he's worshiping Allah because he loves him and he hopes that Allah will love him and he's hoping for the reward from Allah, nothing else. The one who's hoping for the reward from Allah, not for the people to see him, not for the people to hear his recitation, not for the people to see how, how good he can make the ruku' and that he knows where to put his hands and his arms and he knows how to put, whenever he's in sujood, making this the sujood good, if mom is looking, if Omi is watching, making the sujood good, or if Abby comes through, making the sujood good, or if the sister is praying with you, make the sujood good. But if you're praying by yourself, you go peek, 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 like this, and just moving your head real fast, like this, like, like, a, like, a, like a bird, a'udhu billah. But when the people are doing it, you do it because you hope that they see you and they say something good about you. See, now this one is messed up. This one is, is a little bit not good this 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 right here is is a problem so that's not ikhlas so but whatever you have this hope here in allah and the reward from allah alone now the intention becomes purified now the intention becomes purified so that's called ikhlas purity of intention you hope for the reward from allah alone if somebody praises you and says, oh man, your prayer is nice. Oh, you prayed Fajr, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah, good girl, good boy. Allahu Akbar, that's so good. Alhamdulillah, like this, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And, 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 and somebody praises you, then that's not going to harm you. But that's not why you prayed. You're not praying so somebody will praise you. You're praying, hoping for the reward from Allah. And then if somebody praises you some, for some good deeds that you did, then this is just a sign that Allah has given you, given you a reward in this life even before the hereafter. Even before, before the hereafter. But the point is now the action of the heart. Why did the person pray? Hoping for the reward from Allah. Why did the person pray? Knowing that if they do not pray that Allah will be angry with them and maybe he will punish them. And also when all the person is praying, he's afraid that maybe Allah will not accept his prayer. So also whenever the person is praying, he remembers his sins and he remembers his mistakes. And so he's praying so that he's trying to come close to Allah. Because everything in the creation, if you're afraid from it, you know what you do? You run away from it. You run away from it. If some big scary animal comes running in the front yard, what do you do? You run away from it. If there's a storm coming outside with a big tornado and everything is going, wind is blowing hard and trees are moving really bad, what do you do? You run inside and you go hide. You go in the basement. Anytime you're afraid of something in this life, you run away from it. But as for the creator of this life, as for the creator of this life, as for Allah, you cannot run from him. Rather, you run to him. You run to him. You run to him with your heart by hoping in him and fearing him and repenting to him and trusting in him and relying upon him and loving him and asking him for forgiveness and performing the actions of obedience. And at the head of them is to make the religion purity for Allah. All of the actions for Allah alone. And at the head of the actions, the salat. And the best of the salat is the obligatory five daily prayers to perform them hoping for the reward from Allah. Not anything else. Not anything else. Not looking for anything else. Your heart is not directed to, to any other goal or any other aim or any other objective. Only, only to seek the reward from Allah. In this manner, the intention becomes pure. 
hoping for the reward from Allah and fearing the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal. And all of this is based upon love, loving Allah and loving what Allah loves and hoping that Allah will love you. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to, to love us and to make us from those who love Him and to make us from those who are truthful in their faith. And uh, inshallah, in our next class, we will begin discussing the issue of Al-Ikhlas. And that is going to be clarified in the verse, inshallah, from Surah An-Nahl. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ فِي الْأَنْعَامِ لِعِبَرَةً نُسْقِيكُمْ بِمَّا فِي بُطُونِهِ مِنْ بَيْنِ فَرْثٍ وَدَمٍ لَبَنًا خَارِصًا سَائِغًا الشَّارِبِينَ and we'll study some benefits from this verse, insha'Allah ta'ala. And we will see the meaning of ikhlas and how that should occur in our actions of worship. And we close with that. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.